like we was talking today. I said, yo, what we doing? What, what, you know what I'm saying? When I, hey, I feel like when I touch the mic, nigga, I, I deserve millions. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I do. I do. You and I feel that way. You didn't say you deserve millions, though. What'd I say? I, know, I, I said I deserve you. millions. And hey, if somebody give me a contract. You said you a cop out for, for, for like 200,000. A hundred. <laughs> fuck it. When I negotiate a contract with a, with a, with a, 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 you know, a place of business, I negotiate down. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> to make Why? sure that we, but you, sure you, you're that contradicting yourself. Because if you deserve, if you deserve, if you're saying you deserve a hundred thousand, right? Yeah, yeah. Joe Budden gets over ten million, and you think you better than him. So what do you no. deserve? Well, today we, you said it, you said it different today when we was off the air, and I was very complimented because I never heard you talk like that. <laughs> you said, you said, and this was your quote, and I, I wrote it down. You said, if Joe, if Joe Buttons gets millions, then you should be getting twice as more as him. That's what you said to me. I did say that because you, the way you was talking. My dick got hard. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, God damn. Yo, that was the, no man, that was the nicest. I mean, I believe that, but I never heard anybody say it to me. Because you <laughs> I'm the only one saying it. A hundred thousand, a hundred. I was like, you worth kind of more than that. I know, I know, I know. But we got, we got to get the foot in the door. We got to get the foot in the door. See, <clears throat> I look at it this way. Joe Buttons, and I want to talk about Rakim. <laughs> Can you got to talk <laughs> about Rakim. <laughs> I know, I know. But <laughs> Rakim's head is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so it looked like a cyclops. <laughs> but listen, what was I saying? Joe Button. Joe Button. I don't learn anything from it. I listen to it. I shout out to them three. You know what I'm saying? They doing their thing and they getting the numbers and all that good stuff. And I was the first person that said he'd make a great broadcaster when he used to fill in on Hot 97 years ago, if you remember that. Yeah, I remember that. He, he, he used to be a guest up there. Then they started giving him a slot to fill in when they wasn't there. You remember that? Yes, I remember that. Shannon. And I said that he was, uh, anyway, long story short, I just, you know, when I listen to the to the, to the the podcast, I just don't understand why these people have money like that. From that. I don't, and nobody can explain it. All they can say is, yo, oh, that's what he did, you know what I mean? Nobody explains it. What is it? It's, Everything it's, is worth something. But it's consistency. It's it's a uh, it's quality. Consistency. Consistency. Quality. It's catering oh, to an audience, and it's and it's being a product you can trust. Well, well, you don't. You don't. You, said, you know what I'm saying, nigga? Them niggas talk on the mic. If if you're doing a show and everybody's off the mic and shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Everybody, no, goes, right? Where, where you think? What? How can people hear what you're saying? For I what? give them it's, credit it's, on, on what they're doing and getting the numbers. I just don't understand how they get it and and why. That's all. It don't. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's just it's not, it's I not, don't get it. You don't. You don't. Steve don't, Harvey. I'm Steve not a Harvey. big. I, I no. Oh wait, hold up. Let me tell you something. I'm a radio. Aficionado. I listened to radio all day since I was like 14. That's all I've been listening to. Bob Grant to Rush Limbaugh to everybody. I listen to everybody. And if I don't get the program, I still understand why it makes money. These shows today, I don't know why somebody <laughs> would pay for that shit. It's I don't. Because they, they, It's because they was famous from something else and then they it's kind of like a trickle-down audience. Yeah, but in the, when the audience trickles down, they're going to try to, they're going to come to their senses. <laughs> they're going to be like, wait a minute. I like Joe like Budden. It's like cotton candy. It look like a lot. <laughs> but when you start chewing on that shit, you, you'll get to that white cone real quick. But a lot of people, a lot of people have done podcasts and failed, though, too. That's true. And you know why. 
And even as like big, you ever stars, see a- big, big stars have started a podcast and stopped. Man, let me ask you something and be honest. Be honest. Did you hear Rock Kim's audio book? No. <laughs> well, I don't know nobody why you did. think I would, me, I would listen to it. Believe me, nobody did. It came out in about 2019. Yo, a year ago. I, I listened to it. Listened to it about three, four days ago. What's it about? How it was called, what is it called? Wait, wait. Spoken, wait. Talking to Mike, man. Sweat the Technique. I'll read my notes. Sweat the Technique. That's the name of the audio. Okay. And he's talking about his rise to fame. <laughs> and where does he get the inspiration? Who the fuck cares? People who are interested in rock cams. Yeah, know? but why do, why do, no, no, come on. They, they, I understand that people could be interested in it, but what goal do you have? What? What ego do you have to make people think that they give a fuck about how you got somewhere? Who cares? You got this. Shut up. <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, he said, he said, all the elevators. You know how he talk? Like, everything is like, yo. Yo, <laughs> when the elevators, see the ladies come up. You know what I'm saying? Motorcycles, dirt bikes, in the, in the wheelies, and that, you you got your inspiration from that? Then everybody in the motherfucking hood should be rapping. They do. Most about? people in the hood do rap, Shambu. Yeah, yeah, but he had something different and he succeeded. So don't. So after you did that, when you you just said it, everybody in the hood is a rapper, right? Damn there. Okay, so he was one too, but he did something different to get to the next level. Yes. Well, it was less people doing it. No, no, don't, no, don't, don't try to backtrack. <laughs> it was you less said, people doing it when Rock came up. Okay, oh, oh, granted, but there was a lot of people in the hood that were rappers. Yes, not back, not back then. No, there was no. He was the only rapper in the hood. Right, back was, then, back then, shampoo. You was there back then. They, yes, what my, I wasn't there, but from back then, there was breakers. There was niggas who did graffiti. It was, it was like you had your own clique. No, no, I'm talking about, listen, I knew niggas on 142nd Street where my aunt used to be at, and they was all rappers on the block. I remember that. I, listen, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you a secret. None of them pop. None of the people on the block. I'm going to tell you one that did pop. And I knew his mother very, very, very well. Who? Shout out to, shout out to Pinky. So for those of you who are going to know whose mother this is when I tell you the rapper. Big L. Okay, Big L was fire. I knew him when he was like a kid and he knew me and I knew his brother and his mother Pinky. She used to think I was the funniest person on earth, his mother. <laughs> so, so I knew them and he used to write on a notebook pad, him. But he had another brother that thought he was a rapper. They were yeah, from yeah, 142nd yeah. Street in Harlem. I yeah, know I what know, they were. I, 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 Cam told us a story of him and his brother. Oh yeah, I know. You know what you're trying to say? Cam told you like oh, I'm you telling you know, some inside it. shit. I know I'm telling you that shit, but that's some inside shit too. Like how his brother yeah, got killed and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, but I don't like how every time I always say something, you got some famous brother like they did. No, it but that's how I know that. about his brother. I don't know nothing. I know about Big oh, Al. Okay. I don't know nothing about his brother. The only well, the first time I known it, Cam told me about him. I well, pretend Cam ain't tell you nothing. I'm telling you. <laughs> shit, I'm tired of you always interjecting somebody. Hey, shout out to Cam for that new video. That shit is mean. Uh, 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 Medellin. Medellin. We go talk about that. Perfection. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it won't sell. <laughs> what? It's perfection. But anyway, um, I simply say that to say this. If you, if everybody's a rapper in the hood, most, like, you know, I'm exaggerating. Everybody in the studio. Where you at? In the studio? The studio. You know what I'm saying? Okay. These people, Big L, he didn't really get to, because, you know, whatever, whatever. But I was talking about Rakim. Rakim came to glory with that record. I forgot what it was. It was off to the race. Okay. But 30 years later, this is what gets me. This is what I hate. 
I don't want to say hate because I don't hate nothing. This is what annoys me. It gets under my fucking skin. To come back 30 years and since you can't make records really no more because, you know, whatever the test of time, whatever you call it, nobody wants to hear it. You come out with an audio book explaining how you came about <laughs> your thoughts on how you made music. Are you fucking Why crazy? Why did you come out with an audio book, though? Because they think niggas don't want to read. <laughs> I don't know. Niggas don't I don't know what he came out with an audio book, huh? Niggas don't read, Shampoo. Nah, that's they do. Oh, come on. Who, these niggas don't read, Shampoo. They watch Yo. YouTube videos and... Watch niggas explain a book and then they fucking think they read it. They well, don't read. Listen, and, and, and I tell you one thing: if I thought about reading, or uh, if I thought about listening to somebody's book, he he would be the last person I want to hear. But you about. listen to it though. I listen to every morsel of it, <laughs> only because oh, it was tough getting through it. It was tough. I can imagine reading, yeah. but listening to it. But how you listen I, to something you don't like? So you got a critique. <laughs> <laughs> it's some shit that I listen to that I'm I can't critique because I know these people. I can't critique. <laughs> it eats me alive <laughs> not to be able to critique. <laughs> that, yo, I critique everything. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, oh my god. Shit. Yo. This shit is crazy out here. But the point of the matter is people think they're more important than who they are. 